my goodness. No, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. I, I think I see Ruby. Ruby. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Yes, it is. Ruby reindeer, ready to spread Christmas cheer. Well, I, I thought you hated Christmas. You're allergic to it. <sighs> Not anymore. My nose is small. My coughing and sneezing is gone. And I am ready to party. What in the world happened? Four words, human, strong, strong, strong antibiotic. They're the gift that just keeps on giving. I can finally enjoy Christmas. Well, that is great to hear. That brings me a lot of joy because today we're going to go over the best, absolute best part of the real Christmas story. You could say <clears throat> he's kind of the star of the show. Oh, 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 oh. Santa! Christmas, the most amazing holiday ever. 
Christmas isn't just about movies or, or the eggnog or, or the presents. All of that stuff is cool, but, but it's about Jesus. Jesus really is the reason for the season. You got it, Ruby. You finally got it. Oh, this is great. Oh, man, I can't believe it. I'm saying this, but I'm so happy it's Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. Oh, Merry Christmas. <gasps> Uh-oh. What time is it? I, I need to take my antibiotics before. <coughs> Achoo. Achoo. Jill Kemp and illustrated by Richard Gunther. Many years ago, God said that the Savior of the world would be born in the town of Bethlehem. Joseph the carpenter lived in the town of Nazareth. One night, God sent the angel Gabriel to tell him that the baby Mary was expecting was the promised son of God, and he was to marry Mary. He was to marry Mary and take care of her and the baby. That's kind of a tongue twister, kids. It's a little hard to say. The Emperor Augustus wanted more tax money. Uh, he made a new law that everyone was go to go to the town their ancestors came from to put their names on a list. So Joseph the carpenter had to go to Bethlehem. It was a long way away. My ancestor David came from Bethlehem, Joseph told Mary, so I must go there to put my name on the tax list. Even though your baby will be born soon, you will have to come with me because God wants me to look after you. It took about three days to get to Bethlehem, and Mary rode on the back of a donkey. Do you think that was very comfortable, kids? I don't think so. They kind of go bumpity, bumpity, bump. It was a bumpy ride, and Mary would have been very tired and very uncomfortable. So many people had come to put their name on the list at Bethlehem. There was nowhere for Mary and Joseph to stay, except a smelly stable that animals slept in. That night, baby Jesus, the promised Savior, was born in a stable in Bethlehem. A very bright star appeared in the sky right above the place where he was born. Joseph and Mary called the baby Jesus, just like the angel Gabriel had told him. They wrapped him in a soft linen cloth and made him a bed in a manger box of hay. Can you imagine? He came to save all of us. God sent him there, here, so that he could save all of our sins. And here's this teeny tiny baby. What a joyous occasion for us. That's why we're all so joyful at Christmas time to have our Savior come to us in the form of a human, a teeny tiny baby. 
I love the Christmas story. And I know that you all know the Christmas story, but we always repeat it year after year, and we always enjoy hearing it again and again. Don't you, Miss Stacy? I do, because you can always still think of something in a new way that you hadn't thought about before, or learn something new, or think about it from the angel's perspective, or think about it from Joseph's perspective. So there's always something still to think about from the story. Yes, there is. I just, I just love the Christmas story. But you know what? Miss Stacy has some joyful jewels for us today. I do, I do. But you know what? They're not real jewels. Well, but they are real jewels. They're jewels of wisdom and learning about God. Hmm. This is my smile. And this is my frown. Oh, so we're going to think about things that make us happy and things that make us sad. If I got a new puppy for Christmas, I'm pretty sure I would feel this way. I would be smiling. I would be happy. If I fell down, broke my leg, had to go to the hospital and get a cast, uh, this is how I would look. I would be very sad. Sometimes we look like this on the outside, but our insides really feel like this. What if we could have this all the time no matter what was happening around us. Are you going to tell us how? I am. I am. I can't wait. Today, we are going to talk about the fruit of the Spirit, that is joy, and how to have joy. And remember, it's our special Advent week is also joy. So how cool that it works out, that it's a fruit of the Spirit, and it's also an Advent joy. Wonderful. Well, some people think that being joyful or having joy and being happy are the same thing. Mm -hmm. But they are not. The word happy comes from the word happen. So when something good happens to us, we feel happy. But then if something not good happens to us, we don't feel happy anymore. But joy is different. Joy stays deep down in our heart. In the Bible, Psalm 1611, God says, You will fill me with joy when I am with you. So we get joy when we're close to God. When we learn about him and we talk to him and we pray to him and we sing songs to him and worship, all of those things help us to learn about joy and God. And do you know what? There's somebody who's a great example who always had God's joy. Who do you think it could possibly be? I don't know. Everybody at home take a guess. Oh, oh I'm hearing good things. Jesus! And you are right because Jesus is always with God so Jesus is always full of joy. Wow. And we can have that same joy now because God also sent the Holy Spirit to live in our hearts so that we can be closer wow. to God. And that will fill us with joy. And that's why they're called fruits of the Spirit. Fruits of the Spirit, yes. Right. Perfect. And you know what? Joy probably is one of the fruits that gets overlooked a lot. We talk about being kind and loving people and being peaceful and having patience. But joy is one of the ones that's the easiest to see. Because if you're full of joy, people are attracted to that. And they want to know, why are you so joyful? What do you have? What makes you that way? And then that's our chance to share the joy and good news and say, it's Jesus. I have Jesus. And that will give us 
true joy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was that was good, Miss Stacy. I really liked sharing that joyful news. Oh, I do too, and I, I like to know that having Jesus in my heart brings me joy. Mm, that's good. I really, really like that. Oh, wow. Do you know what time it is now? Oh, let's see. I do. That's another special time. <gasps> it's power first time. time. Woo and today's power verse is a special one. It comes from Romans chapter 15, verse 13. And it kind of talks about two of the fruits of the Spirit we've been learning about. So, this is it. I pray that the God who gives hope will fill you with much joy and peace as you trust in Him. Romans 15, 13. Now, I think all the girls should stand up straight and tall and get ready to say this power verse and, and see if you can pick out which two of the um, fruits of the Spirit are in it. So here we go. I pray that the God who gives hope will fill you with much joy and peace as you trust in Him. Romans 15, 13. What are the two fruits of the Spirit that are in there? Oh, I think I heard them. I did too. I uh, think the girls got it. I think so. I think they said joy, which is today's, and peace. How about that? Now, boys, let's see if you can say it a little louder. Are you ready? One, two, three. I pray that the God who gives hope will fill you with much joy and peace as you trust in him. Romans 15, 13. Oh, you were really loud, boys. I, I think you were just really, really loud today. But good job. And as you go into the holiday week, when we get close to Christmas, remember that God does give you hope with the birth of Jesus, and he gives you joy and peace as you trust in him. What a great power verse for this week. Oh, I really like it a lot. It's Time now for Miss Stacy's creative crafts for Christmas. Whoa! All right. Ooh, we're going to make this beautiful fruit of the spirit Christmas tree as an ornament. And guess what? You are going to find all your supplies in your delivery bag that we delivered to your house earlier today. So if you haven't checked, check your mailbox or your porch. Okay, and we're going to make it now, but it's okay if you need to make it later. You'll have all the things that you need. So check and see for your delivery, though. We're excited. Our, your Christmas elves will be coming. Oh, this looks like so much fun. I'm going to show you mine, and then we'll make one. All right, so here's our fruits of the spirit ornament, and you'll be able to hang it on your tree when you're done as a reminder. It's wonderful how the fruits of the Spirit all tie in with Advent and Christmas. That's great. Mm -hmm. All right. So you have some popsicle sticks. And our first piece is joy. And that's our star. Ooh, star, just like Jesus is the star oh, of perfect. Christmas. That's perfect. We're going to start and glue down joy. And we'll hold it on there just a second so it gets a chance to dry. Mine might not all dry perfectly. 
And before you get to glue, you will need to write your words on your Fruit of the Spirit squares, but you'll have a list so you know which ones to write. All right, here comes love. Oh, you just put the glue on the popsicle stick. I put the glue on the popsicle stick. My star did fall off. Yeah, That's it's okay. a little hard. It's not quite sticking. That's okay. We'll get the idea. All right, and then I'm going to keep adding. My next word is Take a while to dry. Yep, but we have to remember to be patient about it, too. You might have to just leave your sleigh flat and just leave it, let it set there. Here comes patience. And just kind of space them out so yeah, that's the patience you need to let it to let it dry which you can see how it's making a tree and we have goodness do you see how it goes from the smallest strip to the largest strip it does that's really cool that's how it makes a tree yes that's the green strips. All right, and here's kindness. And now we have our brown for the trunk. So they're littler. They get smaller again. That's really cool. And they might have to overlap just a little bit. That's okay. Yeah, you have to kind of make sure you put them close together so that they, um, you have room for okay. everything. So there's our tree. And the only thing I have left to do is attach my ornament hanger on the back. This probably won't dry right at this moment. Yarn takes a long time. But I'll show you and I'll hold it so you can see. So there's what you're going to do. And this is the way it'll look when it's all done. So you can wow. every day for the rest of Christmas. Can I show them something, yeah. Miss Stacy? I think I think maybe Miss Stacy had made a little mistake on the back, and that's okay. So she wrote it again yep. on the other side. So if you make a mistake, mistake, it's not a problem. Yep. You can just turn it over and write it on the other side. So that that worked really really well. Yeah, there's room in case you write too big or don't like the way that it that you wrote it. Yep. So even even grown ups make mistakes like that, and that's okay. So there's our creative I Christmas really, craft. I like that. I really like that. Oh, good job, guys. You know, and if you if you don't want to hang it on a tree, you could hang it on the wall or, or somewhere else in your house. On your on, refrigerator. On your refrigerator, on a, a cabinet if you have a knob, anywhere that you would like to hang it. So you could share it with a neighbor. Oh yeah, that's that's really put it cool. in their mailbox. Yeah, that's really cool. I like that a whole lot. Well, you know what time it is now. It's time for me to test Miss Stacy. It's time for brain strain. Da 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 da. I wonder if she'll be good at this today. <laughs> Here we go. I'm feeling joyful, so it's okay. I'm glad you're joyful. And you know what? If we're wrong, that doesn't matter as long as we learn from our mistakes. So the first question is, Joseph was a A, superhero, B, carpenter, C, truck driver. Hmm. Well, I would have to say that he was a carpenter, so I'm pretty sure they didn't have trucks. He might have been a camel driver, but no, carpenter, carpenter, carpenter. Let's see if she's correct. What do you think out there? You have an answer? Here we go. Joseph was a B, carpenter. Good job. Maybe some people think he was a superhero too, you know, could be. Here's question number two. People might not have paid a lot of attention to this guy, Augustus. You know, who knows Augustus? He's, he's not a big part. The emperor, Augustus, wanted more A, jewels, B, candy, or C, money. Hmm. Well, I also remember in social studies, that the answer to most things revolves around money. 
And people always want more, so I'm going to go with C, money. You're sure? I, I think so. You don't think he wanted jewels? They were worth a lot. He might have. Mm -hmm. But I think maybe money. Gold, probably. Gold coins. Oh, gold coins. Okay, out there, make your choice. Hmm. Okay, here comes the answer. Here we go. The Emperor Augustus wanted, the Emperor Augustus wanted more C, money. Whoa, Miss Stacy, you did a great job. You paid attention to the story. It was important, it was about joy. I wanted to know about joy. Yes, and, and boy, the Christmas story is just full of joy. About all of the sign and I think you might want to get something. Yes, I do want to get something because coming up now is one of our very special times. It's time for our sacred moment. And so we kind of turn our, our table into a little altar and that's fine, we can do that. I usually put a little tablecloth out and our little cross and the Bible because that's really important when we do our sacred moment. And the one thing that we always have, even if I forget to do some of this, is our candle. Because we want to use our candle to know how long we're going to be here. So we are going to, we're going to um, think today about the joy that the birth of Jesus brings into our hearts, how the fruit of the Spirit is living in our hearts with joy. And so that's what we want to think about today. And I want you to think about feeling that joy all around you and, and thinking about Christmas, that Jesus is the star, not the toys or the games, but Jesus. So I'm going to turn it on and we're going to think about it just for a few seconds. Okay, bow your heads. Okay, did you feel that joy? Oh, I felt it kind of wrap around me and go into my heart. It felt so good. I, I really like that. I really like feeling that joy a lot. So you know what it's time for now, Miss Stacy? Oh, time to pray. Time to pray. All right, let's bow our heads again. Dear God, thank you at this Christmas time and all the time for giving us joy. And the first joy was Jesus. How wonderful, what a great gift that you shared Jesus with us because you loved us so much that you sent your son Jesus to be with us. And that gives us great joy. May we share that joy with other people. And all God's people said, Amen. Well, you know, Stacy, we're winding down this year, and we we sure hope next year's better and that we get to see all of you kids in person. But until then, we're going to continue to do YouTube Kids Club. We know that last week we had 20 people look at it, so we hope you're one of them. Uh, the next Kids Club will be next year. Oh my goodness, that sounds so far away. I know. It'll be on January 6th, 2021 at 2 o'clock. So make sure you tune in. And don't forget to keep working on your Advent bags so you can finish them up this next week for that Christmas. The last week. Yep, and you'll get your packet um, tomorrow. So that'll be a cool thing. So don't forget that. And uh, we want you all to have just a merry, merry Christmas and, and a blessed Christmas with, with Jesus 
thinking about Jesus and your family. Have a happy time with your family, right, Miss Stacy? Absolutely, with your family and close friends that you're you're seeing. And we know it's still hard. You might not be able to see them in right. person like you might, but still know that they are loving you, and and they know that you love them, and that you're together in the spirit, just like the joy of Jesus. Right, is it right? So, Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas.